Hey, hey! Hey everyone, it's Arian here. So I just finished watching Kaguya-sama Love is War Season 2, a follow-up to the first season of the anime adaptation which is produced by A1 Pictures, the same studio behind anime like The Promised Neverland, Sword Art Online, Anohana, Your Lie in April, etc. Kaguya-sama Love is War is a rom-com scene in anime set in a school called Shuijin Academy, and revolves around two renowned prodigies Kaguya Shinomiya and Miyuki Shirogane, whom both have developed feelings for each other. Rather than intending to confess, they instead viewed as an opportunity or you could say a game in where whoever confesses first loses with the winner being the one who made that person confess. When I first witnessed this premise come into action, I was blown away. Kaguya-sama proved itself to not only have hilarious comedy but also fantastic presentation, well done exaggerative animation, a shock full of charm, a cast full of gleaming personality, and an incredible enjoyability level to it. There were several special qualities to it that really made me think about the amount of passion injected into this adaptation and how much I genuinely loved it. It ended up being one of my favorites out of all the anime in Winter 2019 alongside Mob Psycho 100 Season 2. It was an absolute roller coaster ride. With how Season 1 ended, it's unsurprising that there would be an announcement of Season 2 given how the ending of Season 1 seemed to tease that and that there would be a lot of material out there of the Kaguya-sama manga for A1 Pictures to adapt. As usual, I was excited to see more Kaguya-sama. I mean, after all, it's not as if I was incredibly skeptical of what's to come out of the season. I've seen several people who've read the Kaguya-sama manga talking about how this season would end up being better than season 1. I've also realized that the director of season 1 would be returning to direct the season, so again, I didn't really think anything would go all too wrong with what's to come. As I paid to go on the roller coaster again, I was eager to have the same experience I had last time. And as I went on the roller coaster experiencing the ride, let me tell you, the experience I had was pretty much the same and I enjoyed it as much as I did last time. However, things seem to be a bit different. Maybe it's the change of the rail sequence. Maybe it's how things felt more steadier. Whatever it was, I still felt immensely satisfied. This is how I would describe my experience with Kaguya-sama Season 2. When I first went into watching the first episode of Kaguya-sama Season 2, I was expecting the usual. Just straight in, we get a lot out of the first episode, aka the same qualities that we tend to see in the Kaguya-sama episode. The fantastic and rich animation shown in cuts like when Hayasaka displays her sneaking skills, especially with her destroying a drone. The train metaphor, Chika getting out of control with a dog, that one colorful animation cut involving Chika showing off the fortune teller, etc. Like, man. With all these animation cuts, especially with the overreactions like when Kaguya gets shocked at when Chika marries Chiragani in a board game, when Ishigami friends to strangle Tsubasa with toilet paper, when Kaguya sees that Chiragani is sleeping on her shoulder after giving him decaffeinated coffee, so on and so forth, the over-the-top vibe that Kaguya-sama is known for seems to be intact here. The editing just proves to be top-notch with perfect use of backgrounds, especially stats ones and overlays, whether it be to make a moment dramatic, ominous, or over the top, and the timing of the music and sound effects. The episode really just gets straight to the point and doesn't waste any time whatsoever. It was quite clear to tell given how one of the highlights out of the editing is the integration of a ticking bomb's burning rope during the Hayasaka sneaking segment. There is also the nice subtle twists involved in the gags shown in this episode, like the moment where Ishigami and Shiragani expect Tsubasa and Kashiwagi to reach Nirvana, only to realize they're being messed around, the moment where Kaguya expected to be married to Shiragani, only to end up marrying Chika instead, and the moment where Shiragani isn't interested in knowing his fate and future on a fortune telling gap concerning that he doesn't want to tell his birth date, only to be later revealed that he is interested in this kind of horoscope stuff as he watches the daily horoscope on TV every morning, and that he already knows what his fate and future is on the app as he already used it. With all of this in mind, we can see that Kaguya-sama is Kaguya-sama. Nothing all too different from what it's supposed to be, and in no way is that a bad thing. 
But as things progress, I started to realize that the show began putting more emphasis on the drama elements. I'll make sure to get more into that later in this video. If there is anything I had to say in order to conclude what I had to say about episode 1, it'd probably be the clever and hilarious tinge of commentary on how family will always have importance over money involved in the board game segment of the episode. <laughs> あ、ラッキー。あ、ちさまですね。子供が一人できました。会社が一部上長。1億円を得る。あ、ラッキー。小学生になっちゃいました。かぐやさんはすごいですね。グローバル企業の社長さんですもん。大成功じゃないですか。
It's great seeing that Kaguya-sama Season 2 displays a genuine sense of consistency. I feel like this is all I have to say about the comedic writing. Now it's about time I move on to what I think about this serious writing. The only two episodes that seem to focus much more on the elements of drama in this show are episodes 6 and 11, with episode 6 revolving around Miko Ino and episode 11 revolving around Ishigami. When it comes to episode 6, it does quite a good job at fleshing out Miko Ino, showing how she's this person who remains true to herself with her sense of justice, although she may be laughed at by several people for her seriousness. Fun detail I'd like to point out. There is a character parallel that can be pointed out between Miko and Ishigami with how they both have their senses of justice although Ishigami in comparison is rather more reckless with it. It's interesting to see this parallel as both of them seem to have a dislike towards each other. Now back to what I have to say about episode 6, although I wouldn't say that Miko Ino is this character I can easily relate to, her perspective is still pretty understandable. Beyond the seriousness she exhibits, she is rather hurt by how many upper class men treat her meanly, leading to her sort of developing stage fright, which is shown to be apparent. Later, Shirogane would help her overcome this stage fright by challenging her to a debate, which then later escalates to being a bit comedic. <laughs> Not what I'd quite expect here, but it's not as if I mind it. It kind of shows that even during the show's most serious moments, there is noticeably nice humor sprinkled usually at the end. And to conclude things off, spoiler alert by the way, Shirogane asks Miko if she wants to join the council, with Miko, after thinking about it for some time, accepting the offer. Overall, when it comes to Miko Ino serving as an addition to the main cast of characters, she actually feels quite distinguished. It feels refreshing to see an addition like this prove itself to be something new to the table. If anything, I will say though that I was a bit bothered when the show had Miko Ino mainly involved in misunderstandings at first, as I would have wished for better involvement of her in the gags in episode 7 and 8. But then it's revealed that all of it is supposed to be a build up towards when Miko Ino goes far with her imagination as she believes that Kaguya might be behind all of what she witnessed and man was that moment hilarious. One thing I'd like to add is that this is not only to refer to Kug like the whole Kaguya being behind everything she's witnessed moment but also to refer to the student council wars imagination sequence. It may seem as if I'm for focusing more on the the Kaguya thing, but on the other hand, this is also to refer to that sequence just to clear things up. It's pretty much one of the most witty moments out of the anime, alongside the shoujo gag in episode 7, which is f***ing peak hilarity. It was quite the way of paying tribute to the shoujo genre, although I would have wished to see Chika in the shoujo character design style though. Now that aside, I'd like to talk about the Ishigami arc. The Ishigami arc was easily one of the best highlights out of the season, notably for not only how it proves that Ishigami is best girl but also the emotional resonance I had with it and how much I sympathize with Ishigami. The arc revolves around him participating in the sports festival while at the same time confronting his past. Uh, spoiler alert of course. When it comes to how his past is presented, it's gut-wrenching to see Ishigami's reputation collapse as he tries to sort the situation he got himself into out by trying to write an apology letter, yet every time he does so, he ends up failing at it. It's incredibly understandable as to why Ishigami is the outcast he is. After all, although I would say that I perceived the moment when Ishigami beat the shit out of Ojino as a bit overdramatic, I started to realize later that it was more of a logical reaction to expect from Ishigami. I mean, it was mentioned before that Ishigami had an excessive sense of justice and couldn't tolerate someone hurting a good person, so yeah. This later led to Ojino accusing Ishigami of beating him because he was jealous of Ojino having a girlfriend, resulting in Ishigami being in a tough position and where he has to deal with a suspension and being an outcast. With him being an outcast, he later develops a depressive, gloomy personality and a pessimistic attitude, which is what we usually know Ishigami for having. It turns out that Ishigami isn't the only one aware of the actual situation as it's revealed that Shirogane and the council have been monitoring the situation this entire time with him telling Ishigami the kind of apology letter he should write down. Well, like I said before, even during the show's most serious moments, some nice humor is sprinkled usually during the end. There is one recurring detail I'd like to point out, which is how the minor and supporting characters in this episode seem to have no eyes, at least in 
Ishigami's perspective. Considering how reclusive Ishigami is, it's probably to symbolize people Ishigami doesn't want to socialize with, which reminded me of the similar detail in A Silent Voice, where the main protagonist's perspective involves people he doesn't want to socialize with having X's on their faces. The no eyes detail was even hinted before, notably in episode 7 when Ishigami metaphorically was making a public announcement about how all guys who wear boxer briefs are man wars. With the crowd shown, we can see most of them don't have any eyes. Overall, the no eyes detail was a pretty nice touch to the Ishigami arc. Now, pointing details out aside, what did I think of the Ishigami arc overall? Like I said, I thought it was a highlight worth noting out of the show, and was pretty fantastic with how it shows some character progression of Ishigami. It also got a good message across, which is basically this. Rather than being pessimistic and believing that life is full of misery, it's better to socialize with others and step out of your comfort zone. I mean, it isn't the hardest thing to do, right? If anything, I will say though, there was mo one moment in it that sorta had a how'd you do fellow kids inflection. <laughs> <laughs> While this might come off as a bit nitpicky from me, it's not like it's the same case with the overall portrayal of the age of modern technology and social media we're currently living through, leading me to talk about the finale, specifically the cell phone segment. During the segment, there is a moment where Kaguya accidentally dropped her cell phone, which contained images she didn't want to lose, considering how much she treasures them as memories to look back upon. She later decides to get a smartphone, and after she does so, Shiragane adds her to a group chat in where the council shares their photos, making Kaguya feel much better. It's cool how Kaguya's photo data is portrayed as something worth treasuring, given how the council had great and memorable times together. The funny thing about this is that I kind of view it as a self-aware commentary on how God damn memorable this show is. There is one criticism I have for the finale which is how I felt as if things could have ended in a more impactful way by arranging the balloon gag minus the metaphorical ending sequence before the cell phone segment and maybe integrate the metaphorical ending into the segment so that things could end on an emotional and humorous note but overall what did I think of Kaguya-sama season 2? Overall, Kaguya-sama Season 2 proves that Kaguya-sama is still what it is. By that I mean the level of quality the previous season had remains as it is in this season. Compared to Season 1, the humor personally feels more refined and preferable here, while at the same time there are qualities from this previous season that also feel present here. The on-point editing, the perfectly timed music, the comical voice acting, the off-the-wall metaphorical sequences, the clever comedic writing, a great level of memorability of the cast which is something that continues continues to be furthered, an energetic feel full of charm, and most importantly, a good balance between the doses of drama and the witty humor. It all synchronizes together in just such a way. While there may have been a few minor issues and bits that bothered me, overall I still had a hell of a ride with this season. It's a consistent installment in the series that delivers on the expectations I had for it. Would I say it's a gradual improvement compared to season 1? Not exactly, but it is definitely a very slight improvement to the formula Kaguya-sama keeps perfecting. I'll definitely be looking forward to what season 3 has to offer. This is absolutely worth checking out if you've already finished season 1 of Kaguya-sama. If you're interested in watching this show, I strongly suggest you check it out, especially to those who have a knack for either romance works or comedies or simply rom-coms in general. Anyways, to conclude this review, this show receives an S-. Thanks for watching! Just currently um, opening this package I got um, of the new green screen. Um, if you guys enjoyed the review, make sure to hit the like button. Um, uh, I'm just currently trying to set things up here. There we go. Um, uh, if you want to see more content like this, go hit the subscribe button. And once again, I still won't forgive you, Stitch.